Andy T-Bird here out here in sunny, beautiful Arizona this morning. About 6.30 in the morning, quarter to seven, something like that. Um, just for that to get a ride in this morning before it gets too hot. It's supposed to be 112 today. It's in the mid 80s right now, feels pretty good. Headed north out of uh, Chandler. I went, I have no idea why I just went that way. There's really nothing down there. I tend down towards Casa Grande and stuff, but uh, I'm not going to Casa Grande um, this morning. So I figured I'd just uh, I flip to you and I'm headed north. I'm just kind of cruising around this morning with no particular destination. I will probably end up at my usual watering hole, but that's okay. The idea is to get out and ride. Weather's been brutal here. We've had 33 days, over 110 this year, and no end in sight. Uh, the next two weeks in the one teens again. Uh, God, I can't wait for October. If it even cools off in October this year, this has been one brutal year. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we were kind of hoping that the uh, heat would kill off the virus, but that was not the case. Coming north into Phoenix, and uh, you get a really great view of the mountains here as you go over this little pass as you come in. I remember years ago when I was young, the town didn't even start to right here, and now it goes miles and miles out of here. Uh, straight ahead, we got oh, Piestawa Peak, we got Camelback Mountain, we got to the right, we've got downtown Tempe and the Tempe Buttes. And off in the long distance, you got the Bradshaw Mountains. That's about 50, 60 miles away, so visibility is good today. How many of y'all went to Sturgis? I uh, uh, pray for you guys to all be safe up there. Keep away from the big crowds if you can. Uh, freedom is freedom. Just be safe. Haven't been doing much this last week between work and uh, the hot weather. Just haven't done much of anything. It's kind of frustrating. It's, it feels like you're kind of trapped half the time here. And uh, inside, I mean, you can go out. I mean, if you got a pool, life is good, except for the electric bills. Uh, been playing some music. Unfortunately, we lost a member of our band, the Brotherhood of Blues. He uh, retired out. Uh, the man is in his 70s, and uh, he was uh, pretty much done. Wanted to travel. I uh, can't blame him there. So we've been uh, auditioning people all, all the last two weeks, and again next week we want to make sure that we... It's hard to replace someone that was with uh, the band 11 years and really brought us into a new realm, uh, taught us a lot of things, and uh, Bob, we wish you well. And the search goes on. Uh, we we uh, auditioned a gentleman the other night, and a uh, heck of a guitar player, uh, but we want to make sure that we do our diligence and uh, find the right replacement that's, you know, uh, there's some great guitar players, poor personalities, poor personalities, or good personalities, terrible musicians, uh, but we just want to make sure that this works out. Uh, we we want to we want to keep doing this. We really enjoy it. And uh, I personally have been. I'm one of the charter members of the band, and uh, 15 years in, got a lot invested in this, and uh, over 600 shows played all over Arizona. Uh, have not been out of Arizona to play, but. Uh, um, we want to we want to keep going besides uh, you know we're so used to each other now who's gonna who's gonna want us well these people are not gonna freaking let me merge assholes pardon my French Arizonans can be some of the, some of the most uncourteous drivers 
And I know you guys living in other places will probably say, no, ours are the worst, but uh, definitely let's put it in the top five. Uh, nothing like Los Angeles. It's just there if you put on your turn signal, it's a sign of weakness. But uh, anyway, I had my signal on and people were just uh, not going to cut me a break. Now, there is a lot of people that'll, that'll cut me a break and do, so I try to give it back. But uh, you know how it is if you ride. Kind of a different viewpoint today. I am headed north. The mountains are awesome from this, this uh, angle. The ones that are here in the city. And uh, the scenery is good. I'm going to be headed to the mountains next weekend. Uh, and uh, check that out. And uh, some friends of mine, some people that I've known for many, many years uh, that ride, they're having a having an event out up in the mountains and uh, camping and uh, food and drink and off-road vehicles and all kinds of stuff so that should be a lot of fun. I do not have an off-road vehicle although that is in the long-term goals just to get a quad or something or even another dirt bike. But now that I got a truck to move it around that's good. 202 East now I'm headed to familiar territory again. I should say the area I just came from, I worked down there, so it really wasn't uh, uh, unfamiliar. In fact, probably that's why I headed that way, it was just uh, just habit uh, to go that way. It was kind of nice with very little traffic on the road. Anyhow, rolling down the 202 from the right lane. Gotta merge over, get over to that carpool lane, or the my personal motorcycle lane, as I like to call it. I don't know if y'all have uh, carpool lanes in your areas. Uh, you guys that live in cities, it's godsend most of the time. Although sometimes in rush hour, it could be as just as backed up as the rest of the as the rest of the lanes, which can make it a little difficult to get over if you need an exit. You got to start working on it a couple miles ahead of time. Especially if the carpool lane is moving 40 or 50 miles an hour and the rest of traffic is creeping. It uh, takes some uh, finesse, let's call it. I don't know if all y'all can see this, but the uh, railroad bridge, the one that had the accident, they're working on it. Got cranes there, replacing the span that got damaged uh, when the train derailed a couple weeks ago. They're, they're really working on that fast. a good view of the lake today. They uh, finally opened the lake up again after they got all the rest of the stuff cleared from the train derailment. and uh, They had to test the water and everything because there was a little bit of spillage from some kind of chemical car that went off the tracks. But it's back open again so the rowers and people that you know, wind sailors or whatever they do out there, they, you can't have anything motorized out there. so. Carvana. That's the uh, vending machine for cars. I, th I find that really humorous. I know my my son likes uh, and that amuses him as well. All I can think is, uh, God damn, you'd have to have a suitcase full of coins. It'd take you a month to get the car you wanted. I know that's not the way it works, but it just seems like a car vending machine. That's a lot of quarters. Wonder if they're affected by this coin shortage. Oh well, just being silly. The clouds look nice today. It's just kind of puffy clouds floating by. I love the way clouds look silhouetted against the blue sky. It'd be nice to have some rain. That's not in the cards. We're just not having a monsoon this year. Just like last year. It's frustrating. I don't know how everything, how much longer everything's going to stay alive out here. I know my yard looks like straw. It's just, uh, you have two choices. You water it, you waste water in this drought, and it dies in two weeks anyway. Uh, or you just wait for winter for it to come back, or it's fall. 
if you do have a monsoon storm it will come back rather dramatically and it's where it grows a foot in a week but, uh, I've used the lawnmower twice this year or I should say my wife used it I've used it once or twice in the but that's how it is in the desert, I suppose. It's kind of hard to think that uh, here we are in August, that some parts of the country are already looking at fall right around the corner. Uh, for us, it doesn't happen until later in the year, uh, if at all. Um, the leaves stay on the trees until late December and then they all fall off in a week or two and uh, a lot of green a lot of green around here good visibility today you can see at least 50 60 70 miles it's really nice anybody buy a new bike here lately I try to follow uh, my subscribers, see what they're doing. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Deluxe Chimp just got one of his old bikes back. Congratulations on that. I can't believe that he sold it to somebody who only put 43 miles on it. Uh, uh, but I guess that happens. Uh, a friend of mine had a uh, uh, 19, oh, what, what year was that? 68 shovel head. He has sold it twice. He's owned it for like 40 years. He sold it twice, and the last time it was on a display, and it literally got no miles on it in like four years. And he ended up buying it back, and it had sat so long he had to go through the top end of the motor again because it was smoking. So I guess the rings just kind of lost their lost their tension or something. But he's got it back where it belongs. Uh, he's he's owned that bike since the 70s. For most of the time, he, he sold it a few times to finance projects, but he likes building the old bikes. Yeah. But, uh, it's a cool old shovel head. I rode it once up in Colorado, and uh, if you haven't ridden an old Harley Davidson, it is shocking how much they vibrate. And I guess you can handle it, but uh, damn, that bike vibrated a lot. And uh, I think he may have had solid handlebar bushings, uh, which is uh, really guarantees uh, turn your bike into a paint shaker. But uh, didn't seem to bother him. And I know we rode that. He rode that bike. Uh, we went to Sturgis uh, a couple times on that bike, and uh, uh, been all over the place on it. it. Was a good running bike. It's an old uh, old generator shovel head. Anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. I'm going to do some more video later. Uh, this is Randy t out in Arizona. We will talk to you in a little while. Hey, it's Randy t back again. Sunday morning. Enjoying the, enjoying the view, enjoying the ride. I just wanted to kind of touch back on some things that uh, I talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, reckless fairing. Uh, I've had it a couple, three weeks now or a month and uh, I'm still very uh, happy with it. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like on it uh, when I got it was the five inch windshield that came with it. Uh, everything was first rate on it uh, and I'm just gonna go out and put it out there the windshield was kind of cheap. It was not preformed. It was flat. Um, I didn't really care for the shape of it. Um, so I dug through my stuff and I pulled out a, uh, a stock, a uh, Street Glide 06 to 13 uh, standard uh, windshield for it, the four inch windshield. I put it on, not only does it look better, it went on better, um, and it is perfect for me. Uh, it blocks it up with the wind, uh, that uh, I've got no turbulence, no helmet buffeting whatsoever, and the, uh, 
it looks good and it's just a much better quality thing and uh, uh, reckless no disrespect to your products uh, I think the windshield needs to be better that and I replaced the hardware that was on it because uh, the hardware was just kind of cheesy and uh, I replaced that with some some stuff that I had in my toolbox and uh, feels much more secure now than it was but uh, no complaints with the fairing and just a little take and secondly uh, my uh, new helmet my uh, Arai DTX uh, I've got to say this is a very comfortable helmet I'm really really uh, impressed with uh, Arai I mean it ought to be for what it costs and again I I got a smoking deal on this helmet but uh, I've got my Hero 8 mounted on there and I've got a different setup there and uh, I'm going to switch one of the Arizona Moto Vloggers uh, Arizona Street Rod. He was talking about wind issues uh, and cheap microphones. Um, well, I better go through here. At any rate, uh, he was talking about eliminating wind noise by putting some tape over the or wind uh, microphone bleed or whatever you call it on the 8 so I put a little tape over that front uh, condenser microphone so we'll see if that works uh, other than that I really like the 8 uh, I think versatility wise the 7 is still the workhorse but the 8 uh, does have tremendous stabilization and it's it's good. So, Flinch, we're going to try that trick and see. Um, I do use the Purple Panda microphone, which Arizona Street Rod says is a cheap microphone. Well, it is less expensive, but there's other stuff out there. And not all, and it, not a lot of us can afford a $200 Rode microphone. And uh, I've heard some guys have some tremendous audio, and I've heard some guys that have had some terrible audio. I think mine is is pretty good and uh, I do like the purple panda stuff and uh, this is my second one I set up both helmets with that and uh, I am using the dead cat on this one so I think my mic my mic uh, my audio should be pretty clear on this and hopefully that little trick with the tape over the I got it broke down old gold wing the tape over that uh, condenser microphone eliminates uh, even more of the wind noise. This uh, back to the helmet, the uh, DTX helmet, I feel like it's lighter than my other helmet. Uh, ventilation is good. It's very, very comfortable. Uh, I'm really thinking it was a good, good purchase, and uh, you know it's black, so how could you go wrong? As my bike is, so uh, I'm at my gas station. Uh, I'm gonna have a soda hang out for a little bit and then move on but this is Randy T-Bird out in Arizona if you like what you're seeing if you like what I'm doing out here please subscribe I am at hundred and ninety seven subscribers today it would be way cool if by the end of the weekend I could hit that magical 200 it's just it's been amazing since April I put on nearly a hundred subscribers and I appreciate everybody that has mentioned me and has did shout outs for me as I try to do for you all uh, uh, if follow me on my Instagram if you like to see my uh, Instagram I don't post that much on Instagram but I do some um, check me out on my YouTube channel it's Randy T-Bird if you pull it up just uh, randomly I am even had a couple featured videos lately which is uh, surprising to me but uh, there we go I'm in neutral I'm signing out Randy T-Bird out